110 hybrid. That's a great deal for anyone that's looking for a forgiving hybrid um, uh, at the moment, 24 degree. I imagine you've probably picked one of those up for about 40 pounds on eBay. One eighty driver, unbelievable value. If you want to go and get this driver um, now, second hand, like you, they're going for pretty much nothing. Um, but if you feel like you want a three wood, don't just get a three wood because you need a three wood. Try and think why. What do you need this for? Um, and I'd be more interested in getting that gap between the four one and the three hybrid rather than the hybrid and the driver. Bought one and built one um, on this channel about three, four months ago, something like that. V Steel was light years ahead of its time. You can buy one of these V Steel three woods, four woods. He's got a seven wood. Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's Simon and today we're going to be doing a what's in your bag video. I put this suggestion up the other day um, and overnight I've been sent a tremendous amount of videos of your guys' bags and I'm going to give you advice on what I think you could change, potentially some options in terms of what you can find on eBay in terms of secondhand deals or just maybe some coaching advice where your bag is actually pretty good. That's not necessarily going to be your issue and what you potentially you can work on. As I said in the last video, I can work out a lot just from looking at someone's bag. So let's get straight into them. We've got a lot of bags to get through. Let's do it. Okay, first up is Tom Marchant. He sent this through email. I think email is the best way to send it to me, guys, or we transfer. Instagram's been a bit funny, so sorry if I haven't got your video up because you sent it through Instagram. I've had a bit of trouble with that. However, let's have a look at Tom's bag. Now, I'm going to give you a bit of insight. I'll just let it play anyway. Now, number one, 64 degree wedge, guys. Not a massive fan. Not a ma if you need 64 degrees, it's probably more your technique more than anything. And it kind of correlates what I find throughout the rest of this bag. Now, I love the one length irons. Obviously, it's a required taste. If you're happy getting on with them, then that's very good. However, I did say in my last video, I think you do need a good amount of clubhead speed to use one length irons. And he did say his driver swing speed is about 90 miles an hour. So potentially, he's very borderline for using one length irons. But that's not really the main issue, I don't think. Now... What I'm looking at, now he doesn't show us the crown of the driver. Um, uh, overall, I think bag, bag setup's great. I love the 910 hybrid. That's a great deal for anyone that's looking for a forgiving hybrid um, uh, at the moment, 24 degree. I imagine you've probably picked one of those up for about 40 pounds on eBay, which is a great shout if you're looking for a forgiving hybrid. It looks like it's got reg flex in everything. Um, again, good. Now, here is why, and he sent me some notes as well in terms of his yardages or how much he's, um, uh, how far he's hitting all his balls, and I'll show you in a second. Now you can see quite a lot. Now I don't know if he's bought these second hand, so this could be um, uh, something that obviously I'd need to ask him. But a lot of paint at the moment has been worn away from both the driver, which is the key one. The wood's not necessarily the major one, but a lot of paint with the driver, which for me tends to say you're hitting down on the ball quite a lot. Lofted at 9.5 degrees. Um, uh, and to be honest, when you look at his numbers in a second, let's go back to the email. If you look at his numbers on his pad of paper, driver 220, which is okay, which is not bad, especially for 90 mile an hour club head speed. Um, uh, the irons, however, especially down the bottom, this is a typical sign that you're coming across the ball and coming down on it quite steep. And the reason I say this is this, pitch and wedge and nine iron, as you can see on the piece of paper, 105, 120, that's normal. Like I'd expect if you're hitting your pitch and wedge and nine iron, 105 to 120, your seven iron, your eight iron should be doing 130 to 135, your seven iron should be doing 150, your six iron should be doing um, 165 to 170, five iron hybrid should be doing 190. Now, the reason or the most common reason that the majority of people um, struggle when the lofts start getting less is because they're already coming down on the ball steep and they're already coming across the ball quite a lot. Hence why, and Thomas, I might be wrong, please comment down below. Um, uh, the reason is because you glance the ball. You're coming across it, you're not getting through the ball. And because the pitching wedge nine iron's got so much loft in it anyway, it doesn't really matter because it slides up the face, gets that back spin, it swamps the side spin, therefore you get a reasonable amount of distance. So overall, looking at your bag, Thomas, I don't think the bag's necessarily the problem, but what I would look out at is swing path and trying to compress the ball, basically getting through the laces, not trying to hit like, 30-yard uh, free kick on the outside of the boot. That's basically where we are at the moment. But overall, I think bag's good. I'd kind of cut down on the lower wedges. I'd work on short game-wise. You've got loads of wedges to work with. 
I potentially start get rid of the 64 degree, start working on uh, being a bit more versatile with the other wedges that you already have in the bag. Okay, the next one is Simon. Plays off seven, very detailed um, throughout the bag and giving me loads of information, which is great. 85 mile an hour with the mid iron. Um, and his big question for me was, I'm thinking of switching the drivers. I don't think this model is that forgiving. Do you think the new offering from Mizuno has improved its forgiveness? The other question is that I find my three wheel driver usually carry around the same distance. Driver runs out quite a bit. Is that normal or should, be, should I be looking to have a bigger carry gap? Now, lots of information. Simon's got some audio in here as well, which is um, really helpful. So let's first of all, have a look at his bag. Hey right, Simon, there's a quick watch in the bag. First of all, clubs are clean, that bag is looking rather sexual. I love the SLDR irons that he has in the bag and I'm loving and a big fan of the Cleveland wedges at the bottom of the bag as well. Now he says some good information there. So I've got Cleveland RTX 4 58 degree wedge. Just a standard bounce on it. The ground's quite hard around here, I don't want anything that's gonna jump on me. Now, interestingly, he says that. Now, I'm making assumptions, big assumptions here. However, ground's quite hard around here. For me, it means that he plays around a Lynx course. I might be completely wrong. But the reason that, that kind of then goes on to the same uh, set is we go through the rest of his bag. He's got a good set of wedges, uh, irons, everything else, which is fantastic. Looks after them. That's always good to see. Got some good array of clubs. Hybrid here, for example, three hybrid, quite low lofted. Again, Lynx course, you need to flight your clubs quite well. Now, Simon, I could be completely wrong. However, what I would say is, Sorry. looking through your Callaway XR, again, good. I love a line grip as well, big fan. Now, he's got the ST Mizuno 180 driver. Unbelievable value. If you want to go and get this driver um, now, second hand, like, you, they're going for pretty much nothing. Um, but overall value for money great driver now is the new st 190g um uh, or 200 is that any more forgiving no it's not any more forgiving than you what you've already got simon however your question to me is your carry for your driver and your um uh, three wood is basically the same for me because you potentially have to flight the ball quite a lot depending on your hard ground i'm gonna say lynx windy golf course you're probably gonna get similar carry because you're used to flighting it. Now, if you want to get more distance, you're gonna have to start hitting up on the ball more, and also you've got it lofted quite low from what I remember as he shows here. Okay. 10 and a half, oh, um, standard. Basically, switch to this, got 10 and a half degrees of loft on it. Um, switch to that just for a lower flight, or a more penetrating flight. So so you want a lower, more penetrating flight, which again is really important and more information. Now, just like tall pros, they flight golf balls, they hit down on them, they're adding spin, but they need to find a fairway. They need to make sure it's consistent, otherwise the wind's gonna take it and throw it 30 yards offline. If you want more distance, you have to hit up on the ball and you have to create less backspin. The downside to that is your bad shots are gonna be worse because there's less backspin. And also at the same time, you can have an array of worse shots. Whereas hitting down, flighting shots, just like um, Simon's wanting to do, is gonna reduce distance. But if you're finding more fairways and you're getting more um, consistency and you're scoring better, he plays off seven, so he's a good golfer. He knows what he's doing. That's the downside. I've learned with long drive, if you want to hit the ball further, tee it up higher, hit up on the golf ball, make sure your swing path and, set and club face are in line and the ball's going to go a mile. Does that mean that you're going to be swinging or hitting more fairways? No. You've got to work out, is 30 yards more carry distance going to give you a better score over the course of the year than hitting that flight on you at the moment? But in terms of advice, Simon, I would keep your sexy looking bag the way it is. I think you've got an unbelievable looking bag. Um, I love all the choices you got in the bag. I love the wedge setup you got at the bottom. Hybrid, three wood. To be honest, mate, I wouldn't change a thing. Okay, the next one is from Steve Green. Currently 24 handicap, and he has majority of Ben Ross in the bag, which again, I'm a big fan of. However, again, main issue is um, with the driver. He can get over 200 yards, sometimes 240, which is important. Sometimes he gets 240. But his consistency isn't great, left and right. His other issue is with the three wood, it's hard to hit. Now, three woods are hard to hit. 
that's just the way it is boys. Three Woods off the deck is arguably the hardest club to hit because it's got the most um, least amount of loft present um, uh, and at the same time it's not teed up. So you're having to hit down on it and you're having to hit it with quite a decent amount of club head speed to even get that ball airborne. The backspin on a three wood helps the ball up. That's the only thing that helps the ball up with a three wood. But let's have a look at, okay, here we go. Steve's got the best commentary ever when it comes to describing his words. It's almost like doing the weather, listen. Ben Ross Type R driver, nine and a half degrees with a regular flex. Ben Ross three so professional. <laughs> I love it. Pin Carson four hybrid with a regular flex. Big fan of that. Ben Ross HTX irons. Quickly for any beginner that's looking to start the game, Ben Ross HTX irons. Great start. Forgiving. You're not going to get maximum forgiveness because how light or how um, not necessarily low quality metal in the head. But overall, for a beginner, if just getting down to 15, 14, Ben Ross HDX iron's more than suitable. Sorry, sandwich. Ben Ross MDR gap wedge, 50 degrees. Very good. Uh, he's got, I think this is quite a high loft, or is it just 60 degree? Oh, John Daly, three iron. That's a bit naughty, isn't it? Nice little hippo, John Daly, three iron there. It actually looks quite good, but I bet it doesn't feel great out in the middle. That's a tough club to hit. Not sure of the loft for under the wind stingers. Under the wind stingers. Yes, Steve. I love it. Okay, so this is the main issue. Now, he actually sent me data. Again, very similar to the first bag we had a look at. In terms of yardages at the lower end of the bag, pretty good. But then it kind of just all falls off as soon as we start getting lower lofted. Now... 79151, which is really good. So if you can hit your 79151, you should be able to hit your drive 260 yards consistently because you have the club head speed to hit your 79 that well. Now we can see driver 210 normally have got 241. Again, important. Now he sent me even more data, which is great. So let's have a quick look at this. So this is the data that you'd probably look for if you needed a stiffer shaft. Now, on average, i.e. the blue numbers on the bottom there, he's spinning the ball at 3.2, which is quite high. And on average, he's launching the ball at 17.9, which is, again, really high. I'm hoping all of these driver shots were hit with the driver, otherwise these numbers are out. Um, but for me, this is a classic example of having or needing a stiffer shaft in a driver. Um, he's got a regular flex driver um, shaft at the moment. We know the boy can hit it because he's in the 7R 150 already. So this would, to me, scream, I need a lower spinning head and I need a um, stiffer shaft. So you're thinking, I'm personally thinking like M1 2016 version, stiffer shaft, Callaway Epic. Again, very low spinning head, stiffer shaft, um, which you'll probably get for about 100, 140 pounds, depending on condition. Um, uh, but and it's not all club by the way but I can't really fit I wouldn't say if someone came to me 18 degrees launch angle and 13 or 3500 spin you can't knock all of that down just by club there has to be some technique involved however he's fighting the left hand hook which again suggests club face is closing too much on the way down which is regular flex shaft um, and all the data there just screams to me that he's um, fighting the ball rather than getting through it he's got the potential to hit 260 yard drives because the numbers and the club end speed that he's already got especially the ball speed he's producing um but if you've got a slightly stiffer shaft in that driver don't worry about lofting it down but a lower spin head like the two i kind of mentioned um you're going to see a much more tighter dispersion as well as the ball going further okay next up jason gill it gives us quite a bit of information and he has audio on this which is great so let's have a listen Hi Simon, Jason here. Here's my current setup. Um, my driver is a Cobra L4V, 10 degree. I play a driving iron here and there. It's a Dynacraft, 18 degree. Seven wood V steel, 21 degrees. Unbelievable wood for anyone that's looking. I bought one and built one um, on this channel about three, four months ago, something like that. V Steel was light years ahead of its time. You can buy one of these V Steel three woods, four woods. He's got a seven wood. You can buy one of these for like twenty-five pounds. Again, from next to nothing because there were so many produced. Um, but overall, very good wood for the value of money. So I highly recommend going and have a look at that. My irons are Pingzing Two Blue Dot uh, Jay Z Stiff, I think. Um, my wedge is a 56 degree Wilson harmonized with 12 bounce. 
and my putter I'm a big fan is of it. a Hazing to Brilliant Copper. And the fact he's put a super great grip on it as well is hilarious. My, my handicap is 23, 23 but I have a mate that suspects that I'm 18. 23 handicap and playing with that equipment. First of all, um, uh, Jason, I love the bag. I think it's great. Now, you are losing a lot of forgiveness in your eyes. There's no question about it. Technology has definitely moved on. That being said, your mates are probably calling you a bandit anyway. You're probably um, uh, going to be coming tumbling down. Would I advise you change your irons at the moment? Probably not. I'd keep grinding away with them, um, getting better and better. When you do make the transfer and getting better irons, i.e. getting like um, uh, some, maybe some forged heads, um, 200 pound worth iron set, whatever it might be, tightless, Callaway, Ping, um, uh, Ping don't do forge. Um, uh, that would be a massive upgrade to your bag. You're going to see a massive improvement. But the reason I love this bag, I love the putter. If you're getting on well with the putter, do not change that putter. That putter looks filthy. And again, the wood, I love the wood. That's not a problem. Interesting, I'd love to know how you hit that 18 degree and driving iron. It is very forgiving. And to be honest, that could be a very good fairway finder. And I bet it's so much more forgiving than your Ping Zing irons. I'm not sure which one it goes up to. I think you've got a four there with one of your irons. Um, <laughs> Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye. But looking at the whole bag, I'm a big fan of it. I like the, um, uh, again, potential driver. I don't even know if that driver is conforming. Um, you'll definitely see a lot more forgiveness. But overall, I'm a big fan of the bag. Um, I think it's a great way to cut your teeth and grind. Obviously, you said you're 23 in terms of handicap. You're only going to get better going forward. Um, uh, so I'd keep going as, until you're to a point where you're like 18 handicap maybe then invest in a few upgrades, i.e. irons and driver. But the rest of the bag, I think, looks pretty solid. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed that one, mate. Okay, a few of them from Instagram now. Unfortunately, I think the best way is to send these to me in future on email because once I watch them, I can't watch them again. Well, a few of them anyway. But Tommy Pezza, he's got his bag. He's got some audio. One in sight. So, love the idea about critiquing what's in the bag. Um, so, let's have a go. Uh, most importantly, my Oxford United golf towel. Well, club towel. Driver, scratch, scratch the buggery. Okay, so ping driver. Now, I've played with Tom, so I know quite a lot about his swing and where he is in terms of golf wise. Um, uh, he does come across the ball quite a bit, therefore, he has quite a bit of a fade. He has a quite low fade as well, so again, quite steep. However, 12 degree G30 ping driver, as good as they come in terms of forgiveness. So, ping G series, G400, G. Mm, I'd say G30 above, great driver heads. Um, if you're looking for a great, best forgiving driver you can possibly get your hands on, G30, G Series, G400. Yeah, no, G30. G30. Got um, uh, moving on, quite a tough three wood to hit the RBZ to be perfectly honest. Goes absolute mile. Tailor made in terms of forgiving um, wood. Again, I'd go down the ping route if you're looking for forgiving. I've had this for ages, it's sort of been my go-to. Um, I always can hit it pretty well. Um, but I've got four iron as well, which I also like hitting, so I need to um, upgrade this to a two or three. What do you think? Um, Interesting, a lot of people, um, uh, rather than building a bag that suits their game, want to do it for aesthetic reasons. Now, Pezza, if he hits it well, if you've got a club in the bag that is your go-to club, do not get rid of it for whatever reason. The reason it's your go-to club is because the impact factors that you produce with this club work well. Now, if you start de-lofting that, all of a sudden, the carry, the dispersion, the yardage that you're so used to, the spin rate, all goes. So, keep the four rescue. Now, you could potentially get another rescue, slightly higher loft. Um, uh, and again, you've got to ask yourself, why do you need a two or three rescue? Because you've got your three wood, potentially go to a five wood instead, because again, it's going to give you more height, more launch. A two, three rescue is just too lower lofted for your swing at the moment. I know at the moment, yeah, power anyway. Um, uh, so keep it as it is. In terms of the whole bag, clean your clubs. That's a good start. Um, I love the Cleveland wedges. I think that's great. And again, the RBZ irons, perfect for where you are at the moment in terms of your overall um, bag and everything else, which is quality. Okay, this next one's from Rory. Thank you again for putting some audio in. Uh, much appreciated. Let's have a look. 16 handicap, but I'm playing off kind of 13, 14 at the moment. I have got the King F8 and a 10 and a half degree RBZ. Great driver, F8, King Cobra, 
I would say as good as the F9. The F9 just looks better, um, and they put better shafts in the F9. That's why I think the hazard of smoke went down incredibly well. Um, uh, but overall, F8 again, because no many, not many people bought as much as the F9. There's tons of them out there. You can get F8 for like 100, 120 pounds, I think. Um, uh, great bargain. Great club. RBZ three wood. Uh, then I've got the M2 five wood. Then. Uh, I have got a Jack Nicholas hybrid hand down. Uh, then I have Shirikson Z65 with Project X 6. Naughty irons. Unbelievable it's good looking nice. irons. Perfect for his level and his ability, let's say. Um, obviously, he's going to come down. He's going to get faster. He's going to get quicker. I imagine Rory well, sound quite young. Um, uh, therefore, they're going to be too overpowering. You're probably going to need something a bit more controlling. Those things are absolute monsters. They're going to send the ball so far. However, if you've got a 7-iron in the rough that's sitting up a tiny bit and your normal yard is, let's say, for a 7-iron 165, all of a sudden you're going to hit it 200 yards because it's going to come out as a flyer. That's why a lot of people, when they get better and better, they trade that control and precision because you get a consistent level of how far your irons are always going depending on wind, conditions, temperature, grass, whatever. But overall, sexy looking irons. If you're looking, um, there's still going to be quite a bit of money for those irons. Um, but Srixen, with those shafts, if you're looking for a mid handicap, forgiving monster, those are great clubs. Those okay, shafts. Then for the sand iron, I've got an old Jack Nicholas wedge. I uh, don't know what flex it is. And then putter, I've got a tailor made red line with a thick golf pride grip. Thank you very much. Loving the channel. Keep it going. All I would say, thank you, Rory. All I would say, Rory, is that you didn't show me much wedge selection at the bottom. So you're obviously mid handicap at the moment. I didn't see many wedges in your bag. If you're going from those Z um, uh, Srix and Irons to that sand wedge and nothing else, not giving you much room for um, gapping from your like 40 yard pitch shot, 60 yard pitch shot, 80 yard pitch shot, 100 yard pitch shot, which is what you're going to need to get down single fingers. But overall, I think the bag looks sexual. Um, uh, all good. Keep going. Love it. Okay, next one from Steve Riley um, gives us the quickest what's in the bag ever, so don't miss it. But I've given, I've read his email and he's given me some good information, which is good. So let's have a quick look at the, um, uh, let's have a quick look at his what's in the bag. So he's got M2 2016 Woods at the top end. There you go, there was the driver. <laughs> Stephen, I love it. Um, uh, and he's asking some advice. What does he need at, um, uh, with, should, I, should he change anything to get better basically? His rough estimate is 22. He's playing quite a bit with his dad. He wants to join a club. He wants to get his handicap down, etc., etc. Hits the drive or bombs it about 260. Um, uh, again, there was a hybrid you saw there, nice and quick. <laughs> right, his irons are RAC tailor-made irons, which he bought for about 100 pounds. Now he said he's put some fake align grips on there as well, um, uh, but from here they look great. I'm a big fan of a line grip, especially if you're starting the game, because it gives you a good idea of where um, your grip should start. Doesn't really show us much of the um, uh, much of the irons, but he's got quite a few wedges down the bottom as well. Um, uh, now, in terms of advice, what should he be looking at? And he's got a Ross and Monza putter at the bottom there. So, tons of wedges, that's fine. Now, irons wise, the RAC irons aren't that forgiving. Um, uh, they're not that powerful, they're a bit of, yeah, they're not tailor-made all singing, all dancing, and to be honest, tailor-made don't make great irons until they made the P790. I think the P790 is a great iron, but if you're gonna go cast iron, because obviously the M1s, the M2 irons, I would have always gone ping. Um, uh, not to say, again, they're good irons, but if I was to have the choice, I wouldn't go down tailor-made for irons. I'll go down for their putters, I'll go down for their um, drivers, or woods, I should say. Now, if you're gonna get, um, irons you've got he said he's got about 500 pound budget to be perfectly honest your woods are great your putt is great your wedges are great the only thing i would change is the irons going forward um, and i think realistically you should go down the route of like some forged irons so maybe mizuno um, or go down the route of tightless ap2s to 714s or 716s you're going to be able to get a great set for about 250 quid um, uh, get four to pitch and wedge because obviously you can hit it and you've got loads of wedges down the bottom there I can't see all of them to obviously gap up to where your wedge is um, But overall I think top end bag looks great um, uh, mid irons I just get some forward heads because by the looks of things you can hit the ball a long way You're gonna get better quickly So you might as well get some irons that give you a bit more precision, but then also a bit more forgiveness as well It's Smythe. So I have to apologize for a few of them 
Um, uh, Calvin, I have to apologise to Lee, Adam, Jack, and I believe Scott. Um, uh, they kind of sent the videos as like Instagram stories, which I looked at them last night and now I can't open them again. So, boys, if you can just email those to me and we'll do this in another video as long as you guys obviously enjoyed this. But it's Smive's the last one. Hi, Simon, I play off seven. Need to cover the gap between hybrid and driver. Currently hit my hybrid about 2.30, so obviously bombs it. Um, never really played the three wood as my home course doesn't have a massively long par fives, but feel it's something missing from my bag. Now, you're right, you don't really need a three wood. Because you're obviously in it a long way enough anyway, and as I say, there's not many holes that you need a three wood um, if you hit it as far as you do. Now, it's got big tailor made everything. I like the P770 irons, even though they didn't really do that well because there was so much choice that tailor made brought out. If you listen carefully, that's my YouTube video playing on the TV. Love it. Um, uh, so, bottom end of bag, I think it's good. I like the Titleist hybrid. Now, you could probably step it up and give yourself a bit more of a gap i.e. you could probably get um, a slightly less strong wood and then maybe I'd be tempted to be honest to get you something like a 5 wood because you hit it far enough anyway um, so realistically you don't need to have another club that goes about 270 odd yards because I imagine your driver goes I don't know 280, 290 um, by the way you look at the hit it for example you're looking for a more safer club. So you don't want just a club just because you feel like you need to have one. You need to have a bit more versatility into it. So for example, if you're hitting your driver 280 and you hit your 5 wood 240 or 230, um, uh, that's gonna be a great club. You then have a hybrid that then goes 210 to 220 and then your forearm does 200. That's good gapping. At the moment, you've got a forearm which I imagine does 200, 210. Then you've got 230 on a hybrid, which is a massive gap. Um, and then it's straight to driver. So I'd probably sell your Titleist wood, I'd buy something quite similar to it, um, uh, but have something a bit stronger lofted, or less lofted, or keep it, I mean, you've got more room in the bag. I'd just be more worried about that gap between the four iron and your um, hybrid. So maybe get a five hybrid, and then maybe like a three wood, but loft it up to a four. Just so you have more, I, I'm looking for a fairway finder. Obviously your hybrid's a fairway finder. To be honest, your bag's pretty much well set, to be honest, mate. Um, but if you feel like you want a three wood, don't just get a three wood because you need a three wood. Try and think why, what do you need this for? Um, and I'd be more interested in getting that gap between the four iron and the three hybrid rather than the hybrid and the driver. Guys, thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave it a like, subscribe if you are new, and if you want to send me your what's in the bag for the next video, sesgolfacademy at gmail.com. Cheers, guys. See you later.